Here's a phone call. God to Abraham. The Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from a family, from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Big call right there. You're going to be the father of many nations. Really? My wife is 90? Like whatever she was at the time. And it says in Hebrews, all those years later, by faith, Abraham did what? That's what makes God happy. Obey. I can't perfectly follow the law, but I could sure try. I could sure just press in and know what's a sin and what's not a sin. What does he bless? He blesses obedience. He can't bless sin. He doesn't want to bless it, but we have to know the difference. I love this because I've said it so many times since we started the church. I have it memorized. Hebrews 11, 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out, right? He picked up the phone. God said, I want you to go. He said, okay, out to a place which he would receive as an inheritance. And here's what we should all say together. And he went out not knowing where he was going. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like a contradiction? Well, well, fire up the GPS. Put the address in. The address is God's will for my life, and he's not telling me where yet because he wants me to take the first step. Well, that's dangerous. Yes. <laughs> it's a dangerous yes. <laughs> that's the whole point. Try, try the dangerous no. <laughs> you don't want to live there. You don't want to be in rebellion. That's Jonah. You want to end up looking at the inside of a well? Go ahead. Run the other way when he tells you to go to Nineveh. But God found a way to get him back there, didn't he? By the subway train. <laughs> Spit him right out on the beach. You might not believe Noah, but Jesus quoted Noah, so you figure that one out. How about Moses? We did this last week. He got a really difficult phone call from God. He's out in the desert, and all of a sudden he stops by the burning bush. Like, this is different. Don't see that very often. There's a fire, but the bush isn't being consumed. So he got interested and he walks over and the Lord said I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows and the reason I'm calling you Moses is I'm sending you back to Pharaoh that you might bring my people the children of Israel out of Egypt aren't we glad he said yes was it dangerous what's the big deal about dangerous if God is on your side <laughs> he figured that out wasn't easy. Boy, that guy had a rough time with those people. And then in Hebrews, it talks about a great cloud of witnesses, which we won't go into right now. But as I thought about all the people in the Old Testament, they all had to take a stand and say that dangerous yes. And the ones who didn't, like Saul, didn't end well. The ones who didn't, like Samson, all the gifting in the world didn't end well. So we have to aim high and, and trust God that even though we don't have all the answers yet, he will show us. If we pause and we pray and we stay on our knees and keep, I know what you showed me, Lord, but I don't have the release yet. That's okay. But I, I can't stay in my mother's basement till I'm 60 years old. I hope I'm not offending anybody who's in their mother's basement at 60. There could be a good reason to stay in there if you're taking care of her, okay? I'm, I'm making a general statement here. We've got to qualify everything these days, right? This was a really good call because this was a dramatic call that God made to Isaiah. It says in the, in the verses right before this, I was caught up into heaven and I was in the throne room of heaven in Isaiah chapter 6. And he hears these flaming creatures singing, holy, holy, holy is the eternal, the commander of the heavenly armies. The earth is filled with his glorious presence. And they were so loud that the door frame shook. So if you ever wonder why our music is loud, there's your verse, Isaiah 6, 4. <laughs> and the holy house kept filling with smoke. Smoke comes from fire. Fire comes from our hearts. The more contagious we are with that fire burning, the more smoke's going to rise. And that's incense. And the incense is pleasing to God. Our worship comes up to him like incense. I want to burn for you. Get the verse? We were singing it. I want to burn for you. And, and the purer the incense is, the less sin that's in the container, the, the sweeter the smell is to the Lord. And Paul even said it that way, a, a fragrance of life that we can be, just walking in a room to people. And then Isaiah says, I am in so much trouble, I am ruined. <laughs> 
That's the same thing Peter felt when he was in the boat and he just said, Lord, get away from me. I'm a sinful man. This is the initial reaction to holiness and angels. Every time an angel appears, the first thing they say is, don't be afraid. Why? Because they're scary looking. And you probably think it's the grim reaper coming to take you away for all the hidden sins. No. God loves you. He wants you to live in that supernatural atmosphere all the time and expect it. But this is a normal initial reaction that people have. I must be in so much trouble. Here I am. I'm not holy. And all these people around me, all these things, these creatures are, are holy. I never heard anything like this. I'm just a human being, fallible and stammering. My lips are encrusted with filth. And I live among people just like me. But here I am. And I've seen the ver with my very own eyes. None other than the king, the eternal commander of the heavenly armies. Then one of the flaming creatures, we know our angels, flew to me holding a red-hot ember, which it had taken from God's table, the temple altar, and a pair of tongs, and the creature held it to my lips. Get the picture? Get the picture of why we want to live holy lives? Not because we're living up to a legalistic standard. Is because as we sanctify ourselves, as we purify ourselves, we rid ourselves of the, of the habits that might not be open, terrible things that we're doing, but they're keeping us away from God. That's when the fire comes and touches and says, you can do better than this. You don't have to spend eight hours a day watching Netflix reruns and, and binge watching stuff. Spend some more time in the Word. Spend some more time praying. Go out with other people and start witnessing. Find other believers that are on fire and let them be contagious on you. And then you be contagious on them. And then this angel looks at him, called the flaming creature in the voice. Look, with the touch of this burning ember on your lips, your guilt is turned away. And your faults and your wrongdoings are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord's voice, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Sounds like a phone call to me. Lisa, you available? Busy right now? Got a minute to talk? I have an assignment. I'm God, so I heard myself say, give Lisa an assignment. <laughs> That's a word from the Lord. <laughs> It's going to be up to you, Lisa. She's in the back, not because she's backsliding. She just wants to be back there. <laughs> He's picking on me. What do you think? Here's, here's the conditions. I know I told you count the cost. What do you think? Here I am. Send me. That's a good answer to the phone call from God, isn't it? Easy? No. Meaningful? Yes. That's how I want to live. I want to try to make a difference for the kingdom while I'm here.